Everyone loves to talk about AI models, but here's a dirty little secret. The hardware you run it on matters just as much. If you're setting up a real-time automation and your system doesn't react in real time, it doesn't matter how smart your model is. So today we're running three experiments to figure out which one's the best for running AI at the edge. A plain old Raspberry Pi 5, the Pi 5 with the Halo 8 accelerator, and NVIDIA's Jetson Orin Nano. Which one gets you real-time AI, and which one gives you the most bang for the buck? For me, this started with a simple frustration. Latency kills real-time automation. You can't catch a moving object or stop a machine in time if your AI takes half a second to think. I wanted to see if it was even possible for hobbyist level hardware to react instantly, not make a round trip to the cloud, not in a data center, but right here at home. A good example is something like Frigate NVR, which does real-time object detection for home security cameras. You can use Frigate to decide when to record or to trigger an action. If a car pulls into the driveway and I want a light to flip on or a gate to open, that needs to happen immediately and not seconds later. First, let's talk about Edge AI. Most people think of AI as running in the cloud. Your phone sends data to a server, the server runs an AI model, and then sends the answer back. That's fine for something like text generation or crunching big data sets, but for anything that needs to happen right now, that round trip to the cloud takes too long. Edge AI means running the model right on the device where the data is collected, on a camera, a robot, even a sensor in your house. That way decisions happen instantly without waiting for the internet. Why do you wanna run things locally? Three big reasons. Latency, real-time reactions like stopping a machine the moment a hand gets too close. Privacy, sensitive data never leaves the device, whether it's video of your kitchen or medical data from a wearable. And reliability, your system keeps working even if Wi-Fi drops or the cloud goes down. Training a model, teaching it what to recognize, usually happens in giant data centers with racks of GPUs. Inference is putting that trained model to work, making predictions on new data. Every time a camera spots a person or a microphone recognizes, hey Siri, that's inference happening. Inference is lighter than training, but on single board computers, that can be very demanding because you're asking them to keep up with real-time inputs frame by frame. A real-time workload, like video streaming in at 30 frames per second, means the device has to run inference a dozen times per second without falling behind. And that's why the hardware matters so much. If you want true edge AI, fast, private, and reliable, what you run it on has to be powerful enough to handle that model locally. And that's where our experiments come into play. Here are the contenders. Raspberry Pi 5. This is about $80 USD. This is the darling of DIY with tons of community support. It's great for home automation, retro gaming, even general purpose servers. But for AI inference, it's a little bit like asking a scooter to tow a trailer. The Raspberry Pi 5 plus the Halo 8. This is around 150 bucks combined. The Halo 8 is a dedicated neural accelerator designed to be desktop class inference in a tiny accessory module, which means it's designed for edge AI in mind, low latency, low power consumption, and tiny form factor. I have it running on a hat for a different Raspberry Pi 5 and our NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano. $250, this is an entire computer designed for edge AI with CUDA cores, tensor cores, and eight gigs of RAM, basically a mini workstation in your hand. The trade-off, price and power draw. You can probably guess which one's gonna perform the best, but I'd like to know by how much and what it'll cost me. To keep our experiments fair, I'll run a similar object detection model across all three setups. Our AI model is gonna look at an image or a video frame and draw a box around things it recognizes. Like when it detects a person, a car, or a dog, and it has to do it in real time. So I'll be measuring how fast each system processes frames, the reaction time or latency, how much power it uses, cause I'm not made of money, 
and how hot it runs since these computers will slow themselves down if they get too hot. We're using a common YOLO model, short for you only look once, designed to scan an entire image in a single pass, which is especially useful for edge devices operating on limited resources. And each computer will run the model the way it was built to. The Raspberry Pi handles it on the CPU. The Pi with Halo is gonna offload to the Halo hardware accelerator. And the Jetson uses NVIDIA's Tensor RT to squeeze out that GPU performance. So we'll see how each device performs when you use it according to the intended capabilities. And we'll run it a few times so that we can take an average and then make a side-by-side -side comparison of that same model. All right, you ready? Let's start with our baseline, the Raspberry Pi 5. We're running our YOLO object detection model and we're looking at around five frames per second. And our latency is hundreds of milliseconds before we get a response. This means that by the time you recognize a person, the person could already be gone. Real time, not really. And the temps. Okay, so it shot up to about 85 degrees Celsius, and I'll pretend I know what Celsius is, before it started throttling. I don't have a fan or a heat sink on this one, so that definitely impacted the performance here. All right, now let's look at the Halo 8 Accelerator. I have it running as an AI hat for a different Raspberry Pi 5. Okay, so frame rates are jumping from five to 77 frames per second. And latency goes from hundreds of milliseconds to tens of milliseconds. Okay, so now it's starting to feel real time. It feels instant. And the temp is stable now around 40 degrees Celsius. And for power draw, it's pulling only five watts and no throttling. Pretty good. Actually, it's really good for such a tiny little add-on. Okay, and last we have our hammer, the Jetson Orin Nano. Okay, immediately I can see this thing is indeed a hammer. So we're seeing about 157 frames per second sustained with latency under seven milliseconds. And it's stable at 44 degrees Celsius. With a fan, it comes with a fan. And of course, no signs of throttling here. Yes, it is drawing more power, around 13 watts. And obviously it costs the most, but it's buttery smooth and still feels like it has a lot of headroom. Okay, in raw speed, Jetson Aura Nano wins. But in efficiency, Halo 8 is surprisingly strong. And of course cost, the Pi 5 is unbeatable, but only if you don't need real time. So depending on whether you care about absolute performance, efficiency, or budget, each of these setups has its own little sweet spot. This wild variety in performance is absolutely expected. So we have the Pi, it's a generalist. This is gonna be good for general purpose servers, GPIO tinkering, but its CPU wasn't built for matrix math or neural nets. The Halo 8 adds a specialist brain. So this is allowing our Pi to hit real-time speeds and do it efficiently, keeps it cool and handles it reliably. And our Jetson, this is our full AI computer, not just an add-on, has dedicated GPU cores, tensor cores, it was designed for this exact workload. So it's not just about benchmarks, it's about what you can actually build. On its own, the Pi is fine for logging, dashboards, or any after the fact analytics, but not real time. With the Halo 8, you unlock true real time edge AI. This is good for home security, smart cameras, instant alerts and automations. And if you need something industrial grade for real time, like robots in a factory or safety critical automations, then the Jetson Aura Nano really shines. I do have to mention that Jetsons are not geared towards hobbyists. It's a dev kit meant for developers, but even if you are a developer, the experience of setting one up is not plug and play, like not at all. No, for this latest release, setting this up required two different firmware images that are not listed on any official downloads page. And when you do track them down and flash one, 
you boot it up and your screen stays black, which is what it looks like when it's working and also what it looks like when it's not working. Once you claw your way through that setup, it's glorious. But if you're some weekend tinkerer just trying out Edge AI, the setup for it is not straightforward. The barriers to entry are high. It's pretty painful. So for me, this wasn't just about spec sheets. It was finding out whether or not hobbyist level hardware can get you real-time automations. And the answer is yes, but with trade-offs. The Orin Nano is rock solid. The Halo 8 is a really interesting middle ground. And the Pi 5, still amazing, just not for this job. I was curious about how people actually use setups like these in the wild. We talked about Frigate NVR and real-time home surveillance earlier. It's not recommended to run solely on a Pi, but the Frigate docks do have some benchmarks for what it looks like alongside accelerators, like the Halo 8 with a Pi 5 for real-time alerts and camera feeds. The Jetson family, starting with the entry-level Orin Nano that we tried out, shows up in shopping centers, retail analytics, even robotics because it's built for production AI workloads. And our small but mighty Pi, it's also used in production, but for dashboards, kiosks, and home automation hubs, just not live detection. So which Edge AI box is best in 2025? The Pi proves that you can do AI on a budget, just not for real time. The Halo 8 proves that accelerators are worth watching. But if you need the fastest, smoothest, most reliable, of the three, it's gonna be our Jetson or a Nano. But it's still stupid dumb to set up. If you're running something similar, let me know what you're using for real-time automations. And thanks for watching.